on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits, a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 15 of the Beat on Bits podcast. This is a show where I talk about passions, projects, and playlists with some pretty cool people. My name is Brandon and I'm your host. And today I have joining me Ruth, who is the the queen of lighting. Over 1,000 Instagram followers. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> representing home country of Ghana. Yes. And uh, on the way to global fame. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to talk about a couple of things that Ruth is passionate about, including mental health, addictions, travel, relationships, equality, and NGO for women and kids, if we have time for all this. We'll see if we can pack it all in so say hi Ruth hi everyone and maybe you can uh, tell us why you're passionate about some of these things or just pick one to start us off mm-hmm. and we'll just take it from there okay um, so as Brandon was saying I'm very passionate about mental health and addictions going up um, where I'm from it's not very popular and there isn't much awareness so um, coming to Canada I've been working in addictions and mental health for close to three years now and I enjoy making an impact in the lives of people mm-hmm. um, noticing how people start in addictions and noticing how over the course of a year how people's lives can be transformed with the new knowledge they acquire and how they can transition from that to social life so that's it's pretty awesome and I love what I do I'm hoping that I can set up an NGO in the future to support people who can't afford these services for sure mm-hmm. but what kind of got you into the whole um, like mental health and addiction space in the first place like what really sparked your interest in that um, well it's because um, when I was young I had a lot of anxiety mm. but it wasn't called anxiety and it would, they would like attribute it to some spiritual or religious um. kind of like manifestation but it was actually anxiety had a lot of that and nobody could actually tell me what I was suffering from and it was pretty hard because um, I felt misunderstood and I didn't think there was actually a term for it and coming here realizing that there's actually a whole like um, topic on that conversation about that and there's not as much stigma attributed to having anxiety so I felt that there's a lot of women or people who go through that where it's misinterpreted and they don't feel like okay what they're going through is actually valid but it's actually really valid and people go through it a lot over, all over the world it's very common so mm. that sparked my interest so is it something you just kind of uh really noticed that it wasn't working for you at first and then did you notice after you moved that there's different ways to support it and deal with it or absolutely yeah um realizing that here there's a lot of social services that actually support people who have anxiety and realizing that it's valid and it's not some spiritual or religious Mm. manifestation it's not all in my head it's actually real so it's actually you feel like it's normal like it's normalized to have that and it's normal to actually ask for help you're not embarrassed to ask for help because it's not all in your head so going from there I was really excited to be able to have that impact in the life of someone who's struggling with that and Mm -hmm. to be able to tell them well I went through that and it's totally normal so yeah and I can tell other people who may be thinking the same things that you used to think about too so what are what do you usually say to them or have you noticed like a lot of similarities in how they're dealing with things and how they're feeling and compared to how you used to feel yes um usually with a lot of younger children um their parents are not able to understand that okay like um there's something called like a mental health issue where like anxiety for instance and so when they talk to me and say well when i have a situation at hand an exam i panic to the point where i can't function and interrupts my daily life and i can really relate because i've been there i've been that person who would be so anxious i'll be shaking and like sweating and not want to engage with people it was really bad so i'm able to talk to them and say well it's normal i've been there and people like to hear that you've been there you can actually cite examples of your life where you weren't able to go into public because mm-hmm. you were so anxious or weren't able to show up for school not because you were sick physically but because you were going through a lot of anxiety yeah. so they feel like oh okay i can like she understands and then you can support them say well if this happens these are some of the ways you can cope mm-hmm. or if they have to see a psychiatrist a specialized mm-hmm. individual who can actually talk to them about it normalize their feelings and go forth from there so mm-hmm. yeah do, do you find that like there's 
a few general tips that a lot of people can use or is it really specific kind of person to person? Um, there's actually general coping skills that one a person can try when you have anxiety. There's like deep breathing. There's mm. like, you know, some people like to take baths. Some people like to journal. Some people like mm. to write. There's these generalized ways to cope, but yeah. there's different levels of it, right? So if your condition is in such a way that it's hard to function in your daily life, then you'd actually have to go to a specialist because these general skills might not really work for everybody so yeah yeah so depends on the severity it's yeah different. exactly yeah. yeah yeah and i think um sometimes you just see if you're younger there's like one weird kid or something mm -hmm. but you don't know maybe they do have anxiety and they just don't know how to deal with it kind of yes. thing too and exactly. is have you um noticed that there's um a difference in the way people are treated based on like if it's a kid dealing with the same thing or um uh, like whether it's in a school setting or in professional or like what are some of the differences you see based on like age and even like with your own experience mm -hmm. is like is do these general tips kind of apply throughout the whole journey or is it like you need to do these things at certain times or things like that well um, at different points in your life you experience that when you have a situation arising for instance when I used to write exams I would get a lot of anxiety before the paper like I would be sweating and not wanting to like go like meet people not not able to talk like even in class like I was so anxious so it depends like for everybody I feel like it's different with everybody people can cite different examples of how anxiety has affected your life from when they were in high school to senior high school to university it affects different walks of life basically in different social situations so, yeah yeah that's true mm -hmm. and especially like if you're on a podcast and getting really anxious like i'm so anxious right now guys i'm just trying to trying to deal with all the stress <laughs> breathe, breathe, breathe. <sighs> oh that's that actually reminding me your notes on breathing that uh you're kind of taking more of an interest in meditation lately too right oh yes i have like um there's actually free meditation classes um there's one on saturdays like that uh at the land of compassion where you learn to there's beginners class where you can oh, go okay. in and they go through it with you and there's apps on your phone so you can download and you know try like different ways to like breathe relax center yeah. your thoughts and i find that a lot of times when i'm trying to center my thoughts that's when it actually goes like gets worse right yeah because yeah. you can tell somebody don't think of a white elephant like oh no the white thinking, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah then you start thinking of it so it's actually hard to like center your thoughts so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it takes practice a lot of practice mm -hmm. so what kind of got you into meditation was that just something you uh, just came across as a method to cope with things and decided to try it out yourself or yes it's it came across uh, as one of the skills that i wanted to try because i've seen <laughs> that it helps a lot of people people yeah. have talked to me about it and i was like oh why don't i give it a try and see if it works for me it could be one of the things i could put under my belt as yeah. ways to cope when i feel a lot of anxiety so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that totally adds to your uh repertoire of ways to relate to someone who needs the help exactly. is like you can say you have to try meditation like i've tried it and it worked for me it so would. it's totally gonna work for you exactly. or something like that yeah 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 i tried it too and um getting more into headspace and stuff the mm -hmm. the app for those who aren't aware it's really good just like such a short time every day mm -hmm. easily to manage just put in wherever and it really just slows you down you can sort things out a bit better exactly yeah so i really like that so mm -hmm. and then these it's like with Headspace specifically, there's lots of like special ones mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. for prioritization or like motivation or even anger and all mm -hmm. these things. So even I think it relates to almost everything that even even is on like your list of passions today. Yeah, yeah. You can meditate about even travel <laughs> <laughs> and your relationships and, was, and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Reach that relationship. You need a lot of meditation for that. Eh? Oh yeah, lots of patience. <laughs> I think. Yeah. 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 Especially with that, like mm -hmm. you're. What, what what what's your what would you say your current status is because you you did get engaged or already married in in Ghana? Oh, um, engaged, yeah. Oh, engaged. Okay. Engaged, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how important would you say patience is in the relationship? <laughs> well, you need a lot of patience, especially because I was living alone and it was a huge adjustment to live with another person and try to centered thoughts in the sense that a lot of things that you'd want to say like don't do this like you tend to be controlling when you live on your own like there's mm -hmm. a lot of you like a, things a certain kind of way yeah like and so it's hard for somebody else to interrupt that daily life like doing things their own way and that could create a lot of chaos in the beginning mm -hmm. so it takes a lot of 
patience and understanding on the part the other party's part too right yeah 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 on both sides specifically yeah, yeah. and you have to be like patient with them and patient with yourself because <laughs> you'd be like I, I need it this way but i'm just gonna wait <laughs> yeah 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 and sometimes like i get defeated because i'm not i think i'm patient but sometimes it's like i can't be as patient so i think it takes practice because I might think I'm patient, but other times I can't, I could just, I get overwhelmed. That's the mm. word. I get very overwhelmed and it's like, and I have to try and calm down and remind mm. myself, okay, you need to breathe. You need to, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's every day is practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everyone always says like, good things come to those who wait. So mm-hmm. you rush into anything, you might get really angry at your yeah. partner or your work or whatever. Yeah. And things aren't going to come out very nicely. Yeah. Over there. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I think page is really important too. Mm-hmm. And I think even for... For, for me and Jane, it was like one of the things that she said made it work better is just being patient. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. yeah, you don't need anything right now. You can you can wait five minutes. <laughs> yeah, maybe count. What I do is I count from 10, like 10, 9, 8. Like, mm. And by the time I count to one, like I feel like I that the, the situation goes it depletes a little bit mm. and count down like i just count down in my head or count down or give myself okay let me just count from 20 and then yeah yeah it, it kind of helps when i do that <laughs> so you're like oh 10 doesn't work i'll try 20, 20. <laughs> let's try 30 <laughs> you're standing there for the whole day and you're like still not working <laughs> that happens yeah depends on how bad how bad it is at the time right? yeah, yeah yeah exactly that's yeah. good mm-hmm. yeah that's cool and then so um uh, so patience is obviously like a really important thing in the relationship. What are some other things that you think really make the relationship good and healthy and long lasting? Mm, so there's two things on top of my head, respect and communication. Mm. Yeah. So respect in the sense that sometimes um, people say communication is good. I find that respect and communication go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to respect your partner. Yeah. For instance, like, being able to talk in a way that you're not using derogatory terms, you're not like trying to belittle the person and communicating how you feel at every point in time. So then you don't keep things in. And then five days later, it's like, oh, Lord, I remember Blows up. yesterday, you know, like ugh, I, I was just saying, remember two minutes ago you did this. I guess like there's always a build up when you don't talk about how you feel. So mm-hmm. my partner and I, we've been trying to incorporate communication where we use like feeling words i feel and i need you to hear me are you hearing what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. And one thing we do a lot is we say are you hearing what i'm saying this is what i'm trying to say because sometimes when yeah. you say something everybody gets what they want to get from it yeah like different interpretation yeah. And, yeah yeah it's like for instance i call it confirmation bias where they look for whatever they want to like if i want to hear that you're saying this everything you say will support whatever i'm thinking oh yeah so they're not hearing actually what you're saying they're just looking for evidence to support what they're thinking Mm -hmm. you're saying so we like to reiterate like i'm saying this can you hear what i'm saying right right, so we use that a lot and respect like a lot of respect too for your partner yeah and Mm -hmm. the communication respect i think really you hit a good point there and then they tie together because respect isn't like one single thing Mm -hmm. you have to really know how to respect them right yeah because someone can really be like, oh, I feel like I need to have you open the door for me to feel respected. But some people maybe don't want that mm-hmm, or just want like mm-hmm. totally little things and bigger things too that just very person to person. And yeah. you're not going to know what that is unless you do have that good communication, communication right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So those are very important. So are there any like funny little things that you that you have that you like to be respected in certain ways or like you want to have little things done for you that you really like or he likes little things done for him Mm, in the beginning my partner was his thought process was a little bit traditional where he expected me to like you know cook for him and serve him and that was really not me and for him that was respect like you would serve him and you know like oh like always ask him have you eaten should i put it on the table like you know all that kind of thing so we got to talk about all that kind of stuff and then that is what he was used to however if you grow up getting used to something it's not necessarily what you're going to get in your own relationship so Mm -hmm. you need to say okay this is what we're going to have we're not going to do it how your parents did it we're going to do it how what works for both of us yeah so there's times where like when we started living together he would like after cooking he's just like gonna sit there and wait for me like he's waiting for me to serve him and then
I make my plate and I just go la 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like not even like just go sit down and do it <laughs> yeah and he's just sitting there like where's my plate? where's my plate? <laughs> <laughs> and then slowly he got the oh, you know, okay so you had to train him a little bit yeah a little yeah. bit yeah <laughs> so no that's... I think that's good though mm -hmm. like probably every guy needs a little bit of training <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah I, I felt the same way there's a lot of things where you just because you don't know what the difference in your expectations are at mm -hmm. first until you get into it a little more and then see oh they actually don't really like that or mm -hmm. oh i expected it to be this way but that doesn't really work mm -hmm. with the kind of the dynamic you have and everything yes, yes yeah but it's always it's like a consistent journey right you're yes. gonna learn something new every day mm -hmm. yeah yeah good thing is he's open-minded so i mm. can we get to talk about these things whereas yeah. if a person is strictly traditional these are things that would not bypass his, like, you know, he will not want to change so many things about himself. But if you have somebody who's open-minded about changing, like, what he's used to versus what he's trying to build with you, then it's easier to make those changes where they're needed and to stick with things that they used to do when his parents were together. So, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and open-minded just helps with so many things, yeah, too. Yeah, it does. I think there's even a lot of studies on... Uh, like questions to determine how open-minded you are and mm -hmm. how this correlates to even like physical health issues and stuff yeah. like if you're so rigid your body becomes rigid <laughs> and your health becomes rigid yeah. and you just like turn into a bored follower and, and yeah. die <laughs> in a morbid way mm -hmm. but yeah keep an open mind I yes. think it's really important mm -hmm. yeah so i think on also on the note of like having an open mind and broad perspective how do you feel like travel opens that up and helps people keep an open mind and mm -hmm. things like that um with travel um i think that if you go to different places you realize that just a different culture you're exposed to so many cultures and so many ways of doing things where you get acclimatized to okay this is this is what i was doing however this is how they're doing it and being able to respect other people's culture mm -hmm. while adjusting to okay like if i go to the uh, this country it's respectful to use your right hand whereas another country it's like they don't want you to use your left hand there's so many things so different about different countries so travel open up it opens up your mind to even fashion like culture mm -hmm. like communication like there's so much about travel and i want to get so rich to the point that all i do for a living is to travel <laughs> i'm not there yet but i would love to like yeah to you're you're you got like three times the instagram followers <laughs> i do so you can be an instagram traveler <laughs> a lot sooner than i can <laughs> keep going <laughs> i wish that would be so i i always when i was a kid i dreamt of this like oh i would love to have a job that i just travel meet people uh, but yeah. unfortunately i get to have an eight to four job just like everybody else and yeah. maybe maybe soon enough maybe yeah in the future do you have a like a long list of places you want to visit or you just want to literally um, see everywhere <laughs> kind of thing? um everywhere if i can yeah i have a plate like list of like maybe 10 places i'd like to visit <laughs> like in the immediate in like my short-term plans yeah however long term like a lot of places like i don't have any restrictions so as long as they would have me and mm -hmm. i have the money to go there like i'd like to go have you been to quite a few places already or um europe and north america oh, okay <laughs> basically it so yeah. not a lot of places yeah that's why i saw my list to go to all these places um so on instagram i look i look up accounts that people who travel a lot and mm. i just like look at their pictures and the food and i'm like oh, oh yeah this is the life i want so what's what's at the, the top of that list greece greece yes oh, okay yeah you, you didn't go there when you were in europe the first time no i didn't oh okay mm, i didn't go to i didn't even go to prax <laughs> i, I oh. just where did you go i was in Lon london north london oh just, just london only yes just in london oh, okay. i didn't go anywhere else which is like technically not even europe not exactly. Anymore. <laughs> yeah. exactly so, so you not, still have to go to europe i still have to go to europe and yeah. travel and go to other places but mm. yeah so what did, what did you like about greece that you've seen so far so all i've seen is pictures mm -hmm. um and the architecture is amazing oh, yeah. like i saw it and i was like oh this is a place i'd like to mm -hmm. yeah so i love architecture and one of the things that drew me to Greece is the architecture. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, I think that's that's like a huge thing in like all of North America. Yeah. We have this problem where we don't have like that really nice classic mm -hmm. architecture. Mm -hmm. The only nice things we have are just the nice new things. Yeah. Because the old ones are like, 
what from the 50s mm-hmm. and it's like just all giant brick ugly colors and mm-hmm. everything but then you go to greece and things and these things are thousands of years old but, and yeah. they're like just beautiful it's just beautiful yeah yeah so mm-hmm. we can definitely appreciate culture leaving north or, mm-hmm. or the architecture leaving north america yeah. much more than whatever we'll see here. <laughs> and i know you've traveled too quite a bit for yeah yeah i actually went to um like after graduating i did a like a a Euro trip with my best friend at the mm-hmm. time and we just like toured I think a total of like 17 cities mm-hmm. like backpacked all across oh wow yeah so it was it was seven weeks long and we just had like one backpack oh, each wow it, was, it felt really dirty <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wow. Greece is a place we went to we went to Athens oh, wow. and um this island called Eos mm. it's like supposed to be like the party island it was but I felt too old. These everyone's like eighteen, nineteen, mm-hmm. and I was like twenty six at the time. Like I can't keep up with these kids, oh, man. Wow. I'm <laughs> they so have jealous. party hard, yeah. But I'm so jealous. You've had like a far wider experience in traveling than I have. That's pretty nice. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and it's. I just recommend everyone to travel. Like it, I was, I think every time I've traveled, uh, I've like ended up. I've ended the trip like almost totally broke. <laughs> But I think even even if that's the case, like the, you're investing in yourself yes. and your experiences and your mindset and everything. Mm-hmm. So even if you don't have a lot of money, I think it's still worth it to just squeeze something together and travel somewhere, even if you can't yeah. afford that big luxurious trip. Yeah. It's really good to just get out there. Get out there. I try agree. it. But Greece was really beautiful, mm-hmm. especially like there's uh, like it's almost like they they didn't even touch a lot of these ancient buildings and mm-hmm. stuff and they're like a little bit in ruins but you can still see like imagine how it was at the time mm-hmm. there's even like a uh, old theaters and stuff you can go to like like you'd see in the movies of gladiator and whatever yeah, yeah it's wow. really cool wow yeah so greece is number one on your list hey? it, it is what are some other in your like top five that you really mm, want to see i want to go to egypt too oh egypt mm. nice just like see the the pyramid and stuff yeah. or are there any like like really obscure kind of things that you want to try in any of these places like like i think people have a few common reasons that they want to go somewhere they want to see like a specific tourist attraction or like try some specific foods or just go to like museums or something but then some people kind of have like some interesting little things they want to go to like oh i want to go to um like for example in in Korea, there's uh, this place called Jeju Island, mm-hmm. and on Jeju Island, there's like um, this really different. Like I, I don't know exactly what the culture is related to this specific thing because we didn't get to go to it mm-hmm. when we went there last year. But they have like a penis museum. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> because I think it has to. There was like this island was really all about like the fertility and everything. Yeah. So they have these like statues and stuff Mm -hmm. but it's like something really weird that you don't think you're like oh i'm gonna go to korea and go look at the penis (laughs) museum (laughs) is there anything like that you've heard of in like any of these Um, countries that you're looking at mm -hmm. not doesn't have to be specifically (laughs) that but just like something really interesting that maybe doesn't come to your mind right away when you think about this place Mm, which country oh god there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot yeah well with egypt um the pyramids are I, I'd like to go there and see about their artifacts too. I know they have a oh. lot of artifacts. Um and I'd like to see it and you know, like the history too. I know they have a rich history. So mm-hmm. those are the things I'm drawn to. So not specifically um something there, but just to enjoy the rich culture and then mm-hmm. the artifacts that I've seen online that they have. Because it's run yeah. from some zombie mummies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. To see yeah. all that. That would be great to see. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I've never been to like even the whole area, like n- nowhere in Africa or Middle East or Central Asia. Even for me, it's just been like Canada, a little bit of US, mm-hmm. some East Asia, and some Europe. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely want to. Have you traveled much within Africa or just stayed in Ghana the most part? Um, just Ghana. Did I go anywhere? No, just Ghana. Uh, one time I was, uh, I was supposed to go to Nigeria, but I couldn't go travel because of personal reasons. But I'd love to go there as well because we have a very strong connection to Nigeria. Oh, okay. Yeah, just not Ghana and Nigeria is like, we're not neighbors, but mm-hmm. we have, for some reason, there's countries between us, but we, yeah. we just happen to be very close to Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, that's neat. really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know what? I actually noticed that, um, like, even though I, I didn't know anything about this connection before, but you sent me like your song lists, and then, um, 
one of the artists is like from Ghana and then he's featuring someone from Nigeria as well, yeah, right? Yeah. And then I saw lots of people commenting like, oh, Ghana, Nigeria, yes. forever kind of <laughs> yeah. thing. And then like, I, I like the music, so I looked a little bit more into uh, like the artists and some mm-hmm. other like featured in the same genre and stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of collaboration between like Nigerian and Ghana yes. artists. So it's, yes. that's really interesting for yeah. me. Yeah, that's like, I, I would wish that all African countries have that connection. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, Nigeria, there's a lot of Ghanaians in Nigeria. There's a lot of Nigerians in Ghana. So for mm-hmm. some reason, and that bond has been like it's it dates way back because mm. we have Togo, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, like we have a lot of countries, In so, and, kind, yeah. yeah. But then for some reason, the connection is just with Nigeria, mm. and they're always trying to, like, you know, outdo us, saying you're better than us, your jollof is better than us, but you know, we have the best jollof, right? <laughs> so it's a dish, and they're always like saying, oh, their jollof is better than Ghana, but you know, okay, so you, you have to explain <laughs> what is jollof for. <laughs> For me <laughs> and anyone who doesn't know what else it is. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a dish and um, Nigeria has it and Ghana has it. Oh, okay, okay. So I think it's prepared. For us, we have a way we prepare it and yeah. Nigerians have it. But then the taste, for some reason, is different. So Nigerians mm. always say that, so for instance, we have a common dish. If Canada had a common dish with, say, um, like US, US or something. And yeah. then we, they say, oh, they're whatever turkey is better than canada's turkey uh, and then you're like no so it's kind of like that okay, social okay. banter here back and forth yeah just, yeah 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 this creates a whole lot of controversy but it's i think it's just friendly yeah kind of like, i think yeah. if if there's anything to be controversial about a dish is is a pretty good one to have I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a friendly one yeah, yeah so so what what is the dish like what does it taste like what's in it oh it's rice with like um people some people some make it with chicken some make it with goat meat and then um like sauce like it's mixed with sauce so it comes off like this reddish rice oh okay yeah i've actually had jane tasted before yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think at one of the barbecues we yes. both we both had yeah, yeah now yeah. that you explain it i recognize what which one that which was. one yeah. yeah it was really nice and like it can be spicy too right it can be very spicy we don't yeah, yeah we love our spice <laughs> so, so. Who, who can handle more spice nigeria or ghana definitely gone <laughs> <laughs> you just have to say that for every answer right? <laughs> yeah if there's any nigerians watching take it up with her <laughs> you know it's all love right <laughs> yeah 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 of course yeah yeah that'd be really cool actually i, I i'm like youtube and stuff i can see people watching from which countries mm-hmm. and like um that I, they're only from like canada u.s and oddly enough like philippines and i think brazil mm-hmm. somehow I don't know. I don't know anyone from Brazil. Maybe one person from Brazil, and then like a couple people from Philippines. But it's just really interesting because like we don't even necessarily talk about country-specific things mm-hmm. a lot of the time. But then just people will randomly browse through videos and like <laughs> find something random. My channel is really small, so it's it's really cool. That'd yeah. be cool to have some more viewership from Africa. Oh yeah, talk no, about the exactly. Yeah. Now with with me here, Don't, hopefully I can follow up and have another discussion with Brandon. But yeah. more Africans keep coming on the page. Yeah, yeah. You can judge her explanation of Jello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So yeah, travel I think is really important and mm-hmm. keeping an open mind and yeah. like everything just kind of like relates together so well with open-mindedness having patience and like it's really good for your mental health overall Mm -hmm. i think too because i think uh even people who feel really closed in and stuff and maybe have a lot of mental health issues can feel trapped at times Mm -hmm. and i think traveling would be really helpful to kind of like get out of it yeah Mm -hmm. so definitely recommend that yeah if you you haven't traveled go travel (laughs) (laughs) so we also have uh, on a list of topics equality. So, what do you have to say about equality? Um, so, with that, um, my boyfriend and I were talking about equality in the sense that, um, you know, with how women we are trying to propagate this feminist agenda, mm-hmm. where equality comes in when I say that when I want equality with a man, not to override the rights of men, Mm -hmm. but just to be considered, like say in the US, they're trying to fight equal pay. Mm. Um, I'm just saying that in every sense of the word equality, being treated with respect, just as a man, being able to go and transcend to various areas of your profession, your social life, not being limited because you're a woman, you know, not being limited because of your color, not being limited in every aspect of your life. So equality in generally every sense of the word. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what something that I'm very passionate about. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Is there, do you know uh, of a lot of kind of like efforts or causes and stuff related to equality that you really like what they're doing or just 
ones that you've heard of or maybe even some ideas that you have of your own that you'd want to eventually like get out there to promote equality? Um, I think it just starts with even your show, which is a very good initiative. Like this conversation we're having right now, mm -hmm. because if we, there isn't a specific program or uh, an event that can change that. It just starts with we having this conversation, somebody yeah. watching, like, you know, just being able to educate or tell people or bring the awareness that it's okay for another person who might look different or another person who's a different gender or another person who has different choices just to just feel accepted, yeah. you know, and it starts with two, com two people conversation like this or um, seeing somebody on the street, treating them with respect and being for someone to see that and say, mm -hmm well, it's normal. Like, it's normal to accept everybody regardless of where they're from, regardless of what they look like, regardless of their color. And I just, I think it starts with the little things, you know? Yeah, that, that's such a good point too because I feel like if, if you don't see a lot of different kind of interactions that, and then hear a lot of different perspectives and stuff, you're really going to get wedged in like one specific way or mm -hmm. even just be really influenced by what someone else tells you because you don't know, exactly. right? And I think that's a huge problem with kind of like how... People are so influenced by the news and media, especially in yes. like more rural areas of like the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. It's like they're they they don't know anyone from from this place or know anyone of this religion and things like that. So the only opinion they have is like what they hear on the news or whatever, mm -hmm. and that's not always the best one. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's like never the best one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that you brought that up because it's it's absolutely true. It's like if you've never encountered somebody with a different color or somebody who speaks a different language, you have this stereotype where you're like, oh, she's so, so, and so, so it means she's this, you know, like just mm. to tag them based on what you've heard or somebody else's interaction. However, you haven't even stepped outside your shell to even have a conversation with this person. And knowing that one person's interaction is not the generalized view of what that is, that's not the generalized yeah. truth. It's your personal interaction and people are different. People's experiences are different. So it could be different. Yeah. You know? And you, you can't just let, even if say like, um, if you have some, uh, prejudice for like people who wear turbans, for example, yeah. or say, and you met just one guy who wears a turban and he was just a total dick to you. You're not going to be like, okay, this person was a dick to me. So all people who wear turbans are a dick to me now. Mm -hmm. You really have to, that's just kind of like one step you take into the like whole path and you yeah. really have to just keep going and yeah. not really make the prejudice and it's hard sometimes to kind of overcome it and even realize that you yourself have some kind of prejudice because exactly. even for me growing up sometimes like uh, like there would I would see a, like a person or like a group of people and then feel like afraid inside but I don't know why because like I've never like dealt with people like mm -hmm. this or like talked to any but then maybe you've just like seen on the news or something mm -hmm. and it's it's not right to kind of just leave that as it is. You mm -hmm. have to put in an effort to kind of educate yourself, really. Yeah. Expand totally, your mind, yeah. I totally agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Mm. So that's kind of like one of my big goals with the show, actually, is to promote kind of having these like deeper conversations with people in your life and then also people you care about and yeah. just kind of expanding your mind. So that's why I think it's... I'm pushing more to have like um, like equal uh, representation with like male and female guests on the show. Mm -hmm and people from all kinds of different perspectives and like cultures and views and everything so that's great yeah eventually i'll have like the full spectrum of viewpoints and everything and hopefully it's all normalized and mm -hmm. everyone's can all get along yeah i think happily. it's a great great initiative i really like that you invited me here today you know, yeah like, i'm so glad you came yeah absolutely. So it was really nice. yeah and it was that's kind of like another uh slightly off topic thing that i wanted to um bring up was like uh so sometimes like you, you know you meet people or you know people in your life and like they they want something but they're kind of like afraid to ask for it and they expect it to just be given to them mm -hmm. kind of thing and you're like it's it's not how things work and it was funny because I was talking to Jane about uh, something before and then how like kind of people in that stage and I was like that's such a silly attitude because like that's like to draw a parallel uh, in in like this context that would be like me just waiting for you to ask me to come onto my podcast even though like you don't even know i have one <laughs> yeah it's like oh why hasn't ruth asked me to come on my show this sucks yeah but, like, yeah. yeah but you really have to just ask yeah and then, yeah you, you'll be i think a lot of the time surprised that what will happen if you just say what you want to do and mm -hmm. then people support it yeah absolutely yeah. i'm glad i was able to come here and talk about mental health and equality and every other thing that I've been thinking in my head 
but not able to express it because I don't I don't have a platform like this. So I'm glad to be able to share it here on your platform. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you I'm glad you came and <laughs> yeah. were able to share these things. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's always fun to talk about what you what you like mm-hmm. and what you're doing and kind of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then and then what we haven't talked about yet, what but we're about to is also what music we're listening to. So yeah. maybe we can nicely transition into that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had you pick three songs for today yeah. and then I picked three to go along with it. So oh, maybe cool. I wrote them down here. Cool. So maybe you can tell us what they are and what you like about these songs or these artists. Oh, okay. Um, I'll start with All the Stars by Kendrick Lamar featuring SZA. I don't know how to pronounce her name. I think it's SZA. Or SZA. Yeah. SZA. Yeah. Yeah. That's her. So I heard this song from the movie Black Panther, mm-hmm. and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And I've seen the video, and it's pretty neat. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, have you seen the video? No, I haven't seen the video. Yet. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. Is is it like a is a music video featuring scenes from the movie or anything, or is it kind of just totally no? Different? He draws it from different like um, continents and cultures. Oh, cool. So m- more so Africa. So there is like scenes where there's uh, black panthers walking with him. There's parts with women adorning like these like African fabric, and it's like you know black queen slaying and oh, oh it's, it's oh man I'll check it's, that out. It's, it's so neat and dope like it's yeah. really cool yeah i'll put a link to that in the video description yes if yes. you're on youtube yeah. check it out check it out it's awesome yeah mm-hmm. good song too it's on the radio like all the time mm-hmm. too right now yeah. yeah hot track hot movie <laughs> yeah so what else do you got um there's, there's this african song kitty featuring mayo kun and davido the the, the the song is Odo and this is the remix so he's a Ghanaian artist but he's featuring two Nigerians on the song and I love that song it's a love song and oh. Africans go crazy for love songs you know yeah, it's, yeah. so it's like pretty neat so yeah that one had like a, yeah, a nice like kind of happy beat I yeah. watched the music video for this one because I haven't heard this song before so I wanted to look it up and stuff and yeah it's like so bright and like the sun shining mm-hmm. there's like beach and everyone mm-hmm. looks like so like chill and oh yeah we love our love songs davido and kitty kitty has a lot of good songs like love songs out there now so he's oh. a, yeah so he's he's blown up has he been around for a while or he's pretty new mm, he's i think he's been around for a while but he's this is kind of like his year because he has a oh. lot of good songs like out now so yeah. Yeah, I saw a lot of related videos for him when I looked yeah. this one up, and like, yeah, I listened to a couple other. I don't remember what they're called, but there was. Mm-hmm. I, I like the like the happy, you feel good, like relaxed vibes yeah. that come with the kind of music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you got a classic here as well. Oh yeah, I have a old song by Ciara, One Two Step, featuring Missy Elliott. Yeah. Oh, I used to love that song because of the steps and the dance, and I love dancing. I'm not so good at it, but I love dancing. And that was one of the songs I used to jam to oh, <laughs> in <okay>. the day. <laughs> so, so you know the one, two step moves by heart too? <laughs> oh, that would be for another. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make you sure this, okay? Not today. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next time. Yeah. You have a reason to come back. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'll leave my moves out there. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really good. And mm-hmm. then I, so I, I, of course, everyone knows one, two step pretty much. And mm-hmm. all the stars all over. And then. I went and listened to uh, the Oda remix, which I really liked. Too. Mm-hmm. And then I picked a few songs that I feel like can mix together with oh, it really nice. Cool. And then like one uh, that's relevant to something that just happened today, actually, that is kind of, that's a little bit of a sadder note, so I'll leave it till the end. Okay. But yeah, so I picked, I like to have a K-pop song in like every episode I do because uh, Jane always finds <laughs> new ones and I'm always listening to them in the background and <laughs> I, I secretly really like them, but I don't want to tell her too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her I'll let her enjoy both, the, both of us and then I'll just mix it later and take all the credit but really really she finds all the songs all the k-pop songs so I have to credit her That's and cute. this one's called feeling by a, a group called UNB mm-hmm. and of course it's it's a group full of like really good-looking young guys so oh yeah we like those yeah yeah so and they got all the dance moves oh. the songs are just always too catchy so mm-hmm. they just go well with everything so that's my k-pop song for today and then one that's going to mix really well with One Two Step, uh, I think it's called It's Blow You Up by Yogi featuring Aluna George. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a, like a slower EDM song. Mm-hmm. Um, got some a little bit of like tropical vibes too mm-hmm. and then some nice female vocals with it. So yep. that'll go well. And then, I don't know if, do you know who Avicii is? I've heard the name. Yeah, so yeah. Th- this guy is, a, a, is like a Swedish DJ mm-hmm. and he's been making music for like over, over 10 years. Mm-hmm. So he's had... 
quite a big, uh, quite a few popular songs in like the EDM world. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think maybe 2015 or 2016, he started really breaking into like mainstream. Mm-hmm. And one song that kind of like everyone's heard is called Wake Me Up. You know that one where it's like, wake me up when it's all. Yeah, I yeah. know that song. Yeah. yeah, that's an Avicii song. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then he has a few more of those like Hey Brother was after that. And uh, even um, like Flo Rida's uh, Good Feeling, mm-hmm. that song. That's like instrumental from Avicii as well. Oh, cool. So he's done a lot of work with like some bigger artists and stuff and has a lot of really good EDM tunes. Mm-hmm. And then the reason why it's a sad note is because he, I think when he was uh, 24 only, he got, I think, like stomach cancer or something. Oh. So his health's been like really steadily kind of declining for the mm-hmm. past few years. And today, actually, they pronounced him dead in oh. Oman. So it's like really sad to hear so i think i'm gonna choose this one song from avicii that's kind of like a tribute to how good of a music producer and a dj he was and the song's called the nights Mm -hmm. i think it just came out last year and uh it's it's got a really nice good message about how uh it's like a a guy kind of like remembering the lessons that his dad gave him about how like um like one day you're not going to be here anymore so you have to like leave something behind Mm -hmm. kind of thing and (laughs) Yeah, it's a really nice song, so I'll play that. Do a tribute to our our fallen friend, because yeah. I'm a DJ as well, so I have a lot of respect for, for DJs. Yeah, definitely sweet. lost a, a nice artist today, yeah. so a nice tribute there. So that's our music for today mm-hmm. that we'll go over. Um, so if you're listening to the podcast, just hang on a couple minutes, and the music will just start. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll have to click the next video, because I'm splitting up the videos, talking in music because music? Okay. yeah youtube might just take down the video if it's copywritten music in it oh, okay. so just playing it safe okay yeah <laughs> okay so uh that brings us to the end of today's episode you made Aww, it i had so much fun <laughs> how did you feel um not as anxious as i thought it would be <laughs> yeah right everyone uh, has been saying that like it's not like i have thousands of viewers or anything but it's just i guess being on camera and it's- having your your face on the internet and stuff for potentially forever is a little bit intimidating yeah. but once you do it it's it's just fun to talk about things you like and yeah absolutely. like we mentioned before so absolutely. yeah so those were our passions projects and playlists mm-hmm. thank you for watching you can say bye ruth shout out to all my Guinean fans out there shout out <laughs> <laughs> all right hopefully she can come back again soon so that's it episode 15 of the beat of its podcast thanks for listening thanks all for right. watching and we'll see you next time bye guys bye